So uh, we had the zoo mash, um, animal mash, sexy Serengeti, whatever you want to call it. Um, you might have remembered the proposal. Uh, and just first of all, I'm going to show you, you can play around with it. I've sent out an email. It's not going out to the rest of the world just yet. But if you can look through the email, you'll get the URL there. It says zoomash.herograph.com. Uh, and you can select your favorite pictures from the snapshot Serengeti. You can build up a leaderboard of them. There's some great pictures in there, so I just have a look through. I'd like to thank um, Kaylee and Kyle for being mental enough to join on the project and think we're going to do something useful all day, and for making this fantastic. Uh, Kyle for dealing with the database, and Kaylee for making this fantastic front end. And of course, um, to Amit and Stuart, who are probably the biggest masters of dealing with the front and back end crossover that I've ever met in my life, so they saved us a lot of things. Um, so we've got that. That's uh, sexy Serengeti. We also have a version for Galaxy Zoo as well. Yeah, and you can see, so there's now a link here where you guys have been voting, you know, all night or in the morning. It's mostly and me. And now these are your guys' favorite sexy Serengeti. This is all me. Are that was just me clicking on that one every time. But there's so many more. Like there's some amazing photos that aren't actually on the top nine. So yeah. have a look through it. Uh, that, so we've got it for Galaxy Zoo as well. The idea is to try and maybe put this on the site at some point and then um, show people out there on Galaxy Zoo, uh, on Zooniverse.org, the fantastic pictures we get through all of the projects. And we've got one, just last one too. Uh, You're not doing yeah. Galaxies versus the animals? It's been, it's been proposed. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. We will get the greatest single image from the Zooniverse. will be the, the very top level thing. Yeah. And so it's, what's really kind of nice about this is um, in order to switch from using snapshot Serengeti to Galaxy Zoo, all we had to do was swap the database and the skinning, and it's just like completely worked. So expanding it to the other things is like absolutely trivial, including. <laughs> so uh, this um, this is a hipster mash. Uh, so we're going to do this isn't this isn't uh, live yet, but we're going to do it here just quickly if we've got a chance. So we'll shout out. Also, big thanks to Ruth who gave this fantastically uh, garish design. Yeah. Is, uh, um, so who's the most hipster? Right or left? Wow. <laughs> Did you his glasses off for the picture? Okay, go quickly. Oh no. <laughs> Glasses haven't appeared once yet. There's there's a, a pair of glasses that four different people are wearing in this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so definitely check out the the sexy Serengeti one. Let's build up that we board see some great animals. So we'll send this one to you. Um, when we're ready for it, we'll get on yeah. the board of the, by the end of the conference, hopefully the most hipster person here will be. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, yeah. 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 
So what I worked on, so I was really excited on the first day about the Astro Query tool, which is basically uh, written by Adam and Tom for querying um, the various databases that you get in astronomy, so Sinbad, uh, Vizier, and trying to get information from those in a, like an easy way that kind of across all of them. Uh, so what I worked on, what I ended up working on was uh, based on also Gia's suggestion of implementing this in ADS, A, D, A, ADS. <laughs> um, and in some way that would be really useful. So at the moment it's really cool, you can start to see citations, but a lot of it's pre-rendered. So it'd be nice to see that in some sort of interactive way. So if you wanted to see, uh, for example, all the supernova remnants that were discovered from 1990 to 1995, and then visualize that and put filters on and that kind of thing. So this is where that kind of came from. Um, because of the hack, I was doing it like, in the easiest and fastest way possible. Um, and major, major kudos to Adam. <laughs> Uh, when I encountered various things in Astro Query, also just like implemented various things like on the fly within 10 minutes. It's really awesome. So now uh, Astro Query has the ability to do criteria queries to the Sinbad database. Um, so basically, what it did was it takes, it uses Skyview to generate the SIP so you can do arbitrary projections, arbitrary regions, um, feed that information into Astro Query. At the moment, it just targets Sinbad. And then from there, plots it and utilizes it in Amplify so it can do these things. So to give you an idea of a couple of the things that it that I managed to get it to do. So I'm in HBC. So this is basically just mapping the whole sky in the number density of HBCs based on the Sinbad database. So what you can see is that the Magellanic Cloud and the leading uh, the leading arm, the stream, all come through really clearly, and you can do this with like any kind of object uh, at arbitrary resolutions. And you can also do things like over time. I mean, you could do this based just on the say citation plotting. So this is plotting. The number of citations at the position of 1987A over time, uh, the supernova remnant. So you can see that there was nothing before the, the it actually went. But after that, the papers really spiked. And it kind of stayed constant for a while and then kind of drizzled off. And then an extra galactic supernova came in side there. Uh, so that's one of the things you can do. You can also do this like plot the zoom objects across the sky. And the last thing is so, um, in, for example, instead of just number density, um, or you can, you can expand this to citation density across the sky, so you can start to map. So this is just exact, exactly what ADS AFS does, but in a queryable way, so you can start to look at objects. Okay. So that's, that's what I got. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, yeah, uh, Pat and I and, and Laura did some hacks on Warwick Telescope, a, a, a few little things that uh, bind together to. Uh, one of the things we were trying to do was to um, show exoplanet systems as real planetary systems in, in Warwick Telescope. Right now, the one 3D orbital system is the solar system, everything's relative to that, and we want to be able to go to um, uh, any place that, where there, there's known uh, exo exoplanet solar system that has. Um, uh, known orbital elements, and so we uh, kind of made a hack to, to do that for one case, um, but we really want to generalize it to be um, uh, such that it's populated by, by Kepler, and it'll be part of the WWT distribution. So um, uh, we are uh, working with Jonathan to, we kind of have a specification document, which we, which is kind of the, uh, the result of this, with with Jonathan, he's going to be working on that um, uh, 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 soon, and so I'll look for that coming out. And then another uh, thing that we're looking at was to try to track as we do these tours, especially for education, kind of coming back to the evaluation of, of our impact uh, when we do these uh, public outreach or, or even in scientific events, um, um, how many people actually use it for different cases. Uh, we came up with a, a, a way to basically put a counter into the worldwide telescope tours, um, and, and we'll, we'll generalize that to, uh, to allow it to be uh, counting uh, different places for the tour so you can see if people completed it. You can also, if the tour has any branch points, you can actually start doing some um, some analytics of how people are, are moving through some different um, uh, some different choices that they're making uh, <coughs> through it. So, um, and that kind of feeds back into the last thing that, that uh, Pat was working on, which is uh, the uh, Okay, and Alyssa's saying that we should say how we're doing this counter in the worldwide telescope tours. So the way it works is you can put in a ghost image at various slide points. The one on the front. The first slide, some various midpoints, and then the 
end slide, and then worldwide telescope will call this phantom um, image slash web page and just put a counter on that so you can keep track of how many people have seen the first slide, the last slide, the middle slide. Um, with what? Um, we tried actually to use Google Analytics to embed this inside our worldwide telescope tour, and it turned out that pulling out the exact bit of um, URL that we needed was more complicated than we had time to solve. So it was encoded in SSL, and uh, we just used another 50 years to decrypt this. Talk to the NSA. They can do it in less than 50. So I just wanted to quickly talk about um, this general plan that we came up with um, on uh, measuring impact for our EPO work. So if you go to the NSF webpage around informal science, they have this 120-page tome on how to plan evaluation of your project. And most of us who are doing you know, short, small science festival events or planetarium shows, we might not have time to read through that 120 page show. So what we're trying to do is aggregate the best sort of quick and easy resources that you can use to do something to measure um, what you're doing. So um, there's a poll out. A lot of you have already responded. Thank you. If you want um, early access to Roy's iOS app um, for the surveys, um, take that survey and you can put in your email address and Roy will send you a link. And um, I think that's it. Thank you. Just since my computer's here, we switched the computer again. I was listening to say what I did yesterday. I had lots of fun. I ended up apparently reusing my hack for Dr. Family 4 a lot by having lots of people in the database. So I'm glad I was very useful in uploading a database for you. Um, I did try the making archive pretty and into a magazine in the doing other things, and I discovered two things. One um, is that, that that was perfectly easy to do, and um, and that I, I can easily pull the archive RSS feed, parse out all the elements, get the images from the PDF, do all that stuff, except that did you realize archive is ugly as fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I think we all need to work on this. Um, if you show every archive paper with the most large or prominent image in it and display it in a nice way, it doesn't display nicely at all. About 95% of them have no interesting images in them whatsoever. <laughs> um, it turned out just as I come from a star formation background, I had assumed that <laughs> other people's papers were visually attractive. <laughs> <laughs> shows you the tweet rate across this and the previous Dr. Strongly, and I'm alarmed at how much they are the same. I'll hand over I think we're the only conference where the tweeting goes down at top of the This is, sorry, this is new. I don't know where all the holes are.